plaza. Yes, yes. This is how we call it, the Lohai Sidur. Huh? Yeah. Or the Brit Olam Sidur, because it was made by the uh, organization okay, yeah. Brit Olam. www.bnoah.org for B-N-O-A-H for Noach B-N-O-A-H dot O-R-G And you can download it there? That's right, you, get, uh, you can download it for uh, uh, smartphones, uh, you can download it as PDF, you can download it as an e-book. said maybe we should also turn off our uh, cameras to get a better bandwidth so we have down here I just turned mine off uh, okay, okay. We, we're very happy to be speaking to you people I thought we might see a picture of you but we're not seeing it right now uh, I am Moshe Goldberg from Brit Olam the Noahide World Center in Jerusalem I'm here with my son Chaim Rabbi Chaim Goldberg and as Rod said, uh, again, very happy to meet you people, and uh, uh, we would like to talk a bit about uh, the the new Sidur that Brit Olam has just published. And uh, as we've been saying, for now it's available free. In a few weeks it will cost not very much anyway, but uh, we certainly would like to hear comments that people have in, in using the Sidur and in getting to, to, to know the Sidur. You can write to us at Brit Olam at the uh, uh, website uh, that we've uh, given you here, and Rod knows our website. Uh, but before that, I want to wish everybody a happy Hanukkah. We, uh, actually, we here in Israel, we started, we lit our Hanukkah candles a few hours ago. But uh, for you, Hanukkah is starting right now. And uh, Chaim, maybe I'd like to ask you a question about Hanukkah before we start on the Sidur. Hanukkah is a holiday for Jews, right? No, no, not exactly. First of all, good evening everybody, and I'm also very glad to be with you. Um, Hanukkah is not um, only a Jewish holiday. Now, I knew you were going to say that. Okay, go on. <laughs> First of all, um, the issue of Hanukkah, the issue of the light in the middle of the, in the most powerful day, I will say, darkness light in the year is something that started very very long time ago in the already in the time of the first being um, human being in the world Adam Adam Rishon he already had um, a ceremony or something very um, announcing about those days that are getting darkness and darkness from day to day but from another few weeks we starting the, that the daylight is going to be much more. But the main issue of Hanukkah, I think, um, also when the Jews started to celebrate this uh, um, this uh, holiday uh, 2,200 years ago, it was because, um, uh, I will say, the, the Greece, the Greece people, they said that the only way of us being connected to the world is through our minds and through our um, conscience. And uh, the Israeli nation said that to say like that, to say something like that, that only the only way that we can uh, get connected to the 
to, to the Kodesh Baruch to, to God, is full of the mind, um, is doing darkness to the world, because we have also the prophet issue. The prophet is a way that God is connecting to us, and not only to our mind, and therefore we fight it, not only for us, but for all of the world. It's a small, very small, uh, I would say, family in uh, in in Judah in those days, in uh, next to nearby Yerushalayim, that decided to fight this big empire of of Greece. So everybody will know that the way that we have connection to God is not only through our minds, but also through the prophets of the Israeli nations and to all over the world. Okay, so as uh, we really said before, we wish everybody a happy Hanukkah, not just uh, the Jews among us. And uh, in the uh, Siddur, I don't, I don't know if we're going to go into the details of that, but one of the things in the Siddur is uh, a discussion of some rituals that Noahides can take on themselves, and that certainly can include some of the... Uh, the uh, things that we do for Hanukkah. But uh, maybe let's go on to the Siddur and talk about it a little bit. This has been, for several years, uh, Brit Olam has been developing the Siddur. It was written originally in Hebrew, but now we have translations into English and into French. As Rod said, this is free for a while now, for another few weeks. Then it'll be, there'll be a small charge to get the Siddur. Uh, we picked out some excerpts from the Siddur. Maybe I'll start with one of them. Uh, and uh, just to explain a little bit about prayer and about uh, what is in the Siddur. I'm reading from the introduction. Maybe, maybe, maybe um, yeah, go ahead. for a moment, maybe I will start also something that is very connected to things that I said before. The first time that we see the word pray in the, in the Bible is when um, is when Abraham is being demanded to pray um, because uh, for Avimelech that took Sarah uh, from him, and God is saying to Avimelech to this to this king that uh, took his wife, uh, took wife Abraham. Um, he's saying to him that he needs to ask from Abraham to pray to God. Since Abraham is a prophet, is a true prophet, therefore he knows how to pray. And the main thing that we need to know to understand that there are there is um, both ways connection between God and, uh, and the human being. Um, for one side, God is speaking to his, um, I will say, to 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 the world through his prophets, and from the other side, from the other side. The prophet or the nation of the prophet is giving back the way of speaking to God through this issue of prophets, prophecy. And they taught us how to pray. And this is basically what we're doing with this uh, Siddur, with this prayer book. We're not only saying all sorts of things to God, but we have all sorts of, um, I will say, a um, key way of how to speak. To God, how to speak back to God. Okay. I will say this is this is a foundation or the main thing that we put in this uh, symbol or this prayer book. We worked for this very hard in the last few years. Okay, uh, I, I would like to read one part of the introduction, and maybe Chaim will continue with another part before we get into some of the details. What is in the Siddur? Uh, Rod, do you have anything to add or to ask before we start? Not at this point. We're okay. Okay, there we are. I'm reading from part of the introduction of the Siddur, and then uh, Chaim will continue. Uh, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, Maimonides, the Rambam, wrote. Any one of the inhabitants of the world, any one, not just Jews, whose spirit generously motivates him and who understands with his wisdom to set himself aside and stand before God, to serve him and minister to him 
and to know God proceeding justly as God made him, removing from his neck the yoke of the many reckonings which people seek, he is sanctified as holy of holies. Any person can reach this state. God will be his portion and heritage forever and will provide what is sufficient for him in this world like he provides for the priests and the Levites. And thus David declared, God is the lot of my portion. You are my cup. You support my lot. Prayer accompanies man through life, provides him with a pathway to God. The methods and the order of prayer of the people of Israel have been established by the forefathers of the nation and by its prophets and sages. The prayer is compri uh, comprised of three parts. One, praise of God. Two, requests to fill the needs of men. And three, thank thanksgiving. The subject of prayer raises many questions. How is it possible to speak to a creator who is invisible to all? How can we fathom the functioning of prayers which are expressed freely from the heart as if a person who prays has the power to convince God to alter his will? Each of these questions could be a, a, the subject for a long discussion or a long talk. Is it possible for every person to conceive his own personal prayers or should he adhere to a standardized formulation? Why are there timings and rules for prayers? These and many other questions are discussed and explained in the literature of the Jewish faith. While this short introduction does not allow us to elaborate on these issues, we want only to relate to God's gift of prayer granted to man, establishing a connection between them and at the same time between man's own soul and consciousness. Chaim, you want to continue about the Siddur? Uh, I will say, the main, the main thing uh, that I will say in this point of the, the discussion, um, I think that uh, the main question is, how do we dare thinking that we can speak with someone that created this big, big universe, big, this big world? Um, this is one of the questions, and it's something that they, on the basis, um, I think that most of the traditions all over the world don't really think that we have the permission even to speak with the, with God. Um, it's very, um, I will say, unique to the Jewish nation when they came to the stage of the history since our fathers, you know, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that we said that we can speak with God. It's, you need for this um, a very big um, hey, azar. How do you say hey, azar in English? Yeah, it's, it's a daring kind of thing to say. It's, uh, Takes a lot of guts. A lot of guts um, with our mind to think that we can speak, um, that we can speak with God. Um, and, but basically, this is what God said to us. And he said it in the beginning of, the, of this nation that uh, we will be able to speak with God um, both ways, not only to prize Him um, for, or thank, thank Him for things that He's doing to us, but also to ask things, and even though in the beginning we didn't cut them, after we asking them a few times, or after we, we, we doing this uh, ceremony, um, from time to time God is listening to us and changing things. Maybe the most um, unbelievable thing that is being changed, that when someone doesn't have any children, and he's praying and praising and asking for children, and after a few years, um, God is giving him uh, a child. It's something that uh, it's, it's, it's more than a miracle. It's unbelievable. But uh, we believe that we have connection with God. And God wants to listen to us. And most of the time even, God wants us to pray. He wants a connection with us. Um, therefore, He asked us, He is asking us to pray to Him so we will have the connection and we can speak with Him. And uh, we won't feel alone and we will feel that we have somebody or someone that you can speak with. Okay, that's, yes. Very good, Chaim, thank you. I'm continuing to read a selected section from the introduction of the Siddur. Today we see around the world the rise of a strong interest in Judaism's universal message. Many people discover the part of the Torah which relates to, the man, to mankind as a whole, it is referred to as the Torah of B'nai Noach, 
which lovingly welcomes everyone who aspires to associate themselves with the Torah of Moses, even if they do not intend to become a member of the Israelite nation. I, I, I'm sure you people listening to me in Nativ know exactly what we're talking about here. We see this all over the place. And we, uh, there, there's a change going on in the world. You were part of it, and we have the privilege of being part of it also. I can, say, I, I can say, uh, in a moment I will say, I can, uh, in a brief moment I will say that in the last uh, past week, I'm, all, I'm dealing with a very large group in Uganda and another large group in Canada that is trying also to build up uh, uh, communi communities of Noahide people. But we have from all over the world people that are interested. Okay, and Rod, I'm sure, can, can add many more that he's in contact. We know that he has a lot of contact with many people. In order to provide a pathway for this ever-growing demand, we have created the organization Brit Olam, uh, the World Noahide Center in Jerusalem, which maintains a connection to B'nai Noah throughout the world, as Chaim just uh, mentions, some new ones, both as communities and as individuals. This enterprise has won the approval and received blessings of important rabbis, the chief rabbis of Israel and other rabbis, and it is constantly developing and expanding. People who agree to abide by these commandments before a court of Jewish law are called the righteous of the nations, and they receive their portion of the world to come together with the children of Israel. A person whose commitment to these commandments is a result of an intellectual and moral awareness is considered a sage of the nations of the world, and he or, si or she possesses a great virtue. Many B'nai Noach seek to express their spiritual aspirations through specific forms of worship, such as prayer, ceremonies, observance of additional commandments, and the like. However, Judaism does not offer any particular guidance for divine worship, which non-Jews are obligated to do. For the Jews, there are certain mitzvot, commandments of exactly when to pray and how to pray. For Noahides, every individual is free to express his feelings in a manner which best suits his inner world. Nevertheless, the demand from ever-growing numbers of B'nai Noah for a prayer book, which can serve the needs of an individual, and even more so a congregation, has become a pressing necessity. This demand motivated us to combine a special prayer to uh, write a special prayer book for B'nai Noach called Brit Olam. Paim, you can add something? Uh, the, the main thing that I want to say is uh, that um, this, uh, this issue, as we spoke uh, three weeks ago, <clears throat> this issue of praying is a, have basically two main points, I would say. First of all, it's the main thing that we're doing Basically, the seven, the seven commandments, most of them are, are things that you're not allowed to do. Yes? You're not allowed to murder, as, as we saw in the last uh, few days in the United States or in the French a few weeks ago. Uh, you're not allowed to steal from, from one to each other. Um, that the only or the main uh, command that is, is being with an active way, by governing, by praying, you're doing it in an active way, you are um, fulfilling on yourself, you're taking on yourself, upon yourself, that you believe in God, and this, this God that you believe in, you're praying to Him. And it's not only um, that uh, this uh, Siddur that we that we organizing, that, we, that we're speaking about it now, um, it's also not only for, the, for each individual, but it's also something that the con con congregation can get and combine together and pray from a, a week to week or something like that, they can take things, not for only for themselves, but also as part of a, a unity group that can do or can organize as a community and to pray together uh, through this uh, prayer book that we just now published. Okay, I think it's time to uh, take a look at some of the contents that we have in the Siddur, and maybe we'll come back to some more general ideas later on. Uh, Rod, uh, do you or, or anybody else have something you want to add or ask? No questions so far. Everything's good. Go ahead. 
Let's just continue. That's uh, okay. The, the the sidur, the first thing in the sidur is the, uh, the to organize the morning prayers. Uh, the prayers here, in many cases, are based on the uh, mostly on the Jewish text of the sidur, but modifications have been made to take into account that the Noahides are different, have different needs, and they will not be able to say exactly everything that the uh, Jewish prayers include. Uh, they will, uh, they're also, in general, they're, they're shorter, because again, as I said before, they're not an obligation, but they're a volunteer or a feeling that a person has that he, he wants to pray. The morning prayer in this Sidur is, is modeled, is a shorter version, but is modeled on the, the Jewish prayers. Uh, in this extract that, I, that I'm looking at and that uh, you may have in front of you, we've taken out some of the prayer. It's a longer prayer than what we have here. But uh, as we said before, uh, prayer consists of three parts. It consists of praise of God, a request to fill the needs of men, 
and thanksgiving at the end. So the praise of God, what we do in the Jewish Siddur and in this Siddur, uh, is we read from the Psalms. And there's a set of Psalms that are read every morning. For example, you have uh, 80, Psalm number 84. Fortunate are they who dwell in your house. They are constantly praising you. This is the first part of the, of the prayer, which is to praise God. Psalm 144. Uh, uh, fortunate is the nation who enjoys this lot. Happy is the nation whose God is Hashem. In summary, this uh, psalm exalts Hashem, God, over his infinite kingship, over his being the source of all good, which comes to strengthen our faith that Hashem opens his hand and satisfies the desire of every living creature. Another very important part of the morning prayers uh, that we have put in the Siddur too, we would expect people to say this, is the Shema, the important uh, verse in the Torah affirming that God, Hashem, is the one and only God, and He is the one that we have to pray to, and the one that uh, cares for us. Chaim, you want to say something about the Shema? Um, the, the Shema is a very famous, I will say, um, one of the most famous uh, words um, that every Jew, when he is growing up, already, when he knows how to speak, um, families are teaching um, their kids this, uh, this uh, small sentence. The sentence is, say, is saying basically that uh, we are accepting upon ourselves um, God, the only one, the unity God, the unity God, um, and He is the God that is going to be um, the God of all of the nations all over the world. As we see today that in all over the world people are asking themselves, trying to be part of this, uh, this big movement, as big, as this big one movement, and this is what we see today. Now these words were said um, something like three, a thousand and five hundred years ago um, with our fathers. Uh, I will say another uh, one thing very important, not about Shema, but also about this, uh, this main prayer. All of those things that we said to, until now are only, um, I will say, the opening or the beginning before the main prayer that we're going to speak now about this uh, Shema Yisrael, about those uh, blessings uh, that uh, we're doing. Um, something like three weeks ago, I'm a principal of a school, okay, of, of a high school. Um, and I brought to my high school, um, it's a religious high school, and I brought to my high school um, a person that converted himself from a Christian to be a Jewish. A Jew, to be Jewish. Now he said that one, he, one of the things that... Um, when he was a, when he was a Christian, before he decided to, to be Jewish, um, when he was something like 18 years old, um, he met um, a very old man that told him he had a very tough life and uh, his uh, daddy uh, died when he was two years old, his mother died when he was eight years old, and all the time he, he was, uh, he had a very tough life. He, he, he met a very old person, and this person, not non Jewish person, and this person told him that he needs to pray always to the father of Abraham, father of Yitzhak, and father of Yaakov. And, and this is something that I was amazed, you know, I was shocked three weeks, three weeks ago. And he, this is what he said as a, as a, as a normal thing to, to my. Uh, to my students, and uh, I didn't know that in uh, Argentina uh, someone is uh, speaking like that, you know, people that are Christian are saying, you know, the truth is that you need to God, you need to pray to the, um, to the God of Abraham, to the God of Yitzhak, and to the God of Yaakov. I thought that something that only closed to the Jewish nation, but uh, if some Christian in, in the in Argentina and people all over the world are saying like that. In, in the next chapter of the Siddur, we are speaking about this uh, main prayer, okay? 
that we, we are asking questions, we are asking some, that we will have a good brain and that uh, we will have forgiveness and that we will have a, um, good health and good uh, money to, to, so we can live in a living. But the beginning of this, basically, is by praising and saying that, uh, uh, that, that we believe or that uh, we are praying to the God of Abraham, God of Yitzhak, and God of Yaakov. And this is the, 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 also the foundation of, of this pray. Um, and it's putting inside a lot of the inside issues that uh, in this uh, coming few minutes, uh, I'm not going to explain everything, but it's putting inside uh, the foundation, the three legs, I will say, of this uh, chair, of this uh, issue. You can't sit on a chair with only two legs or with one leg. You need at least uh, three, chair, uh, three um, legs, and those three legs of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov are three main streams of understanding how we have the connection with God, and this is the basic of the doubling of the train that we're doing every morning. Yeah, let's get a flavor of this. Let me read the beginning of the Amidah prayer. Uh, the Amidah is, uh, has 18 or 19 separate blessings, but here, uh, the beginning is exactly what Chaim was talking about. Here are the words in the Siddur for the beginning of the Amidah. I will praise and extol you, God of the universe, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, supreme God who bestows loving kindness, master of everything, who remembers the saintly deeds of the patriarchs and brings a, a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, supporter, savior, and shield, Praised be your name, the shield of Abraham. That's the first blessing. Uh, this goes according to the three uh, levels that, uh, that I mentioned uh, a lot earlier from the introduction. Praise of God, requesting to fill the need, and so on. You start the Amidah with several blessings which are praising God. The second one... Uh, 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 a moment, uh, that yeah, go ahead. Um, the first one, this one that we said now, is basically saying, who is the God that we're speaking to? With whom are we speaking? We're speaking with God who have all the ability, as we know, to take out the Israeli nation from uh, Egypt with all of the miracles uh, that we, we see there. Um, and this God is not only God of Abraham, it's the God of all those three um, head of these nations. And this is the God that we are speaking with. He has all the um, options of doing everything he wants in this world. The second uh, thing that uh, I will read soon um, is basically saying what are the powerful things that he has or the ability, what exactly he, he can do um, for us. Basically, he's giving life, but I uh, don't Okay, I'm not going to go into the exact wording, but the, the next uh, two blessings are still praise of God. It's God's power and strength, and it's the holiness of his name. And then we go into the middle section of the Amidah, which is something like 12 or 13 separate blessings, uh, which goes into the section of requests that, that we are asking God. I'll give you the first one, the first one uh, on the subject of understanding. The blessing is you graciously grant man knowledge and teach mankind understanding. Grant us knowledge, understanding, and insight. Praised be your name, gracious giver of knowledge. And then there is a series of other blessings where we ask for things like uh, healing for anybody who is sick. Uh, we ask for a prosperous new year. Uh, we ask for the... the uh, quick and hasty rebuilding of Jerusalem. Here I'll give you the, uh, the exact wording of that. May you dwell in Jerusalem, your city, as you have spoken, and the throne of David, your servant, may you speedily establish within it and build it as an everlasting uh, edifice, speedily in our days. Praised be your name, the builder of Jerusalem. Uh, okay, so we have a series of 
requests, blessings like that. And then in the end, uh, we have a third section, which is thanksgiving. Uh, I'll give the very last blessing, a blessing of shalom, peace. Grant peace, goodness and blessing, life, grace, kindness, benevolence and mercy on us and upon all of Israel, your nation. And bless all of us together, our Father, in the light of your face. For in the light of your face you granted us Hashem, our God, Torah and life, love and kindness, charity and compassion, blessing and peace. May it be pleasing in your eyes to bless us and to bless all of your nation Israel with an abundance of strength and peace. The, in the Jewish Siddur, this is an obligation. You have to say this three times a day. We are suggesting for Noahides to take on this prayer and other prayers uh, as they feel the need to do so because they don't have a strict obligation to do it. But uh, as we've said uh, all the time this evening, we uh, put in a lot of work here and we've consulted a lot of people and we think this can be a very good starting point for people uh, to get into praying and to learn to pray and to regularly pray in groups or as individuals. Hi. Yes, I, I will say um, we have uh, we can speak uh, we can speak hours about this symbol uh, and everything all all, all kinds of uh, pieces are uh, really um, offering people to to download this symbol uh, and to see exactly what's happening there. And I will maybe finish before we will have the time that uh, you can ask questions. Um, the issue of this. Uh, this uh, blessing of, uh, I will say, of, um, of uh, doing shalom, doing uh, um, peace. Uh, peace, okay, on, on Israel and all over the world, all, all of the nations. Uh, basically, I think that uh, the key word of this is when people will start thinking more of how to give to others instead of trying to take. All the time, if, if all the people in the world will think how to give what they have to others, how to um, share what they have with others, um, basically the issue of, um, of peace will be resolved uh, immediately. Because the main thing that we see today, and I will say, mention again the issue of what we have in France or what we have in uh, the United Nations in the last uh, few days, um, basically is when people think that they need to take, they need to take life, they need to take from others things, and instead of that, when people will start thinking more and more how they can share what they have, and people have, usually people have more than what they need, and if people will be kindness enough, not only to take to themselves, but also to give to others, so in those times, we will start seeing peace in the world. And the basic thing is to start thinking like that is already starting with kind and heaven in the beginning of the, of the universe, in the beginning of the, of the nationhood um, in the world, when, they, when we believe that all the people came from one mankind, okay, the Adam Arishon, the first one, that from, from him all the nations came. And we don't need to be all the time with the issue of fighting one to each other, but basically thinking of how to give and how to to share with, uh, with, with each other, and then peace will be in this world. Okay, I, I think we can pretty much wrap this up in a few minutes. Uh, I just want to uh, mention that the, I'm not going to go into any more details, but there are many sections of the Siddur, uh, including some that, that uh, have not only uh, the wording of prayers, but uh, suggest uh, rituals or customs that can be tied to other things, like uh, specifically uh, days of thanksgiving throughout the year, holidays throughout the year. There's uh, a, a, an entire section on the holiday of the 27th of Cheshvan, which we celebrated together with uh, many people around the world a few weeks ago, the 27th of Cheshvan is the day that Noah came out of the ark and was given the seven mitzvot and it's a day of thanksgiving for the entire world because it's when 
God spoke to man as a whole. Uh, there's also a, a section here on life cycles. We have customs and prayers for births, for bar and bat mitzvah, for marriage, for divorce, for burial, and for comforting mourners. Uh, I think if you have not yet taken this sitter down in one of its formats, either for a smartphone or as a, an ebook or as a PDF, we really recommend that you take a look. We also would appreciate hearing comments from people who try to uh, who start using the Siddur and, and uh, would like to tell us something, would suggest changes. We want to hear any comments through our uh, website or uh, Rod can help you get through to us and to, to speak to us. Uh, Chaim, anything else? Um, no, I, I'm uh, here. If, if, if you want to ask questions or things like that, then we're all listening. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity of uh, um, publishing or spreading the word and showing the this, uh, issue of this uh, prayer book. Thank okay. you very much. We really appreciate it. I'm going to ask, does anybody have any questions that you would like to ask? Any questions? No all staring at me. So uh, basically, we're just going, I'm going to make sure that everybody's able to download it or get the PDF. When do you think the hardcover book will be available? Uh, I think that uh, you can, you already can have the hardcover book through, uh, through um, one of the, when you're going inside and you can download the book, um, the, as one of the issue, one of the options is uh, to, to take it as a hardcover book, I think, I'm not sure. But if not, so in the next coming few, two or three weeks, it will be already prepared so you can uh, take it uh, download. You can download it as a book also. Or you can, okay. uh, you can, uh, Ask is uh, ask this as a book. I think uh, soon it's going to be on, on the movie or something like that. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, good. Uh, if there's no questions. Uh, let's give them a hand. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. We, we appreciate it. Look forward to hearing uh, from you uh, real soon. And happy Hanukkah to you guys as well. Yes. Have a happy Hanukkah to all of you. It was very nice uh, talking to you. Uh, thank you very much, Chaim. Thank you very much. Yeah. All the best. Happy Hanukkah. Maybe let, let me just uh, here I'm continuing from the introduction. This is Moshe again. I want to read uh, two or three prophecies that are coming true today. May it be the will of the Creator of mankind that the words of His prophet come to pass in our day and age. Rod can tell you, and we can tell you. We see it happening now. And many nations shall come and say, "Come and let us go up to the mountains of the Lord." and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For Torah shall go forth from Zion, and the word of Hashem from Jerusalem. Uh, Micha, chapter 4. And Hashem shall be king over the earth. On that day Hashem shall be one, and his name one, from Zechariah. Zacharias, I think. And I will bring them to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people, from Isaiah. And we enjoyed speaking to you very much. We'd love to have more contact with you and get the Siddur and get get uh, to know it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.